I'm a Lego inventor, and for the next 24 hours, I'm gonna be building whatever YouTubers tell me to out of Lego, starting now. This might sound strange, but I want you to build me my favorite Pokemon, Diglett. He doesn't get enough love, and he deserves it. Cool, looks like we're building the Pokemon. So we're gonna build Diglett, which is apparently a brown thing and has rocks around it. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna start by building the body out of these dark tan bricks, and we can build this up to be about this big. So I'm just gonna try and build up a perfectly round shape and then we'll build it up like this and add the face and the rocks around the bottom. I have no idea what I'm doing. So now I've built this up a couple layers so I should be able to theoretically pull it up from the base plate and this thing is pretty strong. So there we have our base and we're gonna build this up just about this high and then curve off the top. So far this one's pretty easy but I have a feeling they're gonna get harder. <laughs> Now that we got this built up, we can add the mouth and the eyes. So to make the eyes, I think we lay out a few of these pieces and then two of these for like the reflective parts. And then we add a little tile. Hey, it's not bad. Check it out, there's the eyes. And then for the mouth, keep the stud on the back here sticking out so we can add it to the face. And boom, there we have the mouth and the eyes. Boom, there we go. Now all we gotta do is build the rock formation around the bottom, so we'll put it back on the base plate. So for the rocks, I'm gonna start by laying down some wedge plates to give it a rocky shape, and then I'll build up bricks on top to make it look like actual rocks coming out of the ground. All right, and here it is, the finished Diglett model. As you can see, it's sturdy, it's on a base plate, and it has cute little eyes and cute little mouth. I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. I've never done like a Pokemon sculpture before. This one took us around an hour and a half, so. Preston, let me know what you think down in the comments. This one's for you. Now let's destroy it. No, I'm just kidding. Let's build the next one. Okay, I'm running from the cops because I just committed an illegal building technique, but I challenge you to build your biggest fear in Lego. Crap, they're coming. Go, 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 go. Okay. Well, when I was like seven or eight, I remember my biggest fear was the bat that was like Count Dracula, and he turned into a bat and started flying around. That scared the crap out of me. So, let's build a flying bat. You'll need a battery box and a motor. We'll also grab some Technic, because I think that's the best way to do it. You basically need to make two pieces like this flap up and down. Let me brainstorm a mechanism here. So we use this little camshaft here, and this goes underneath the wings. Cool, now that flaps, and we do the same thing on this side. And we're building in black because it's a bat, and we don't want these to be visible. <laughs> I'm getting freaked out already. No, I'm just kidding. So if we add a gear here, and a gear here, cap it off with another one, and snap on the motor. And we'll connect another motor here. Theoretically, it should kind of work. It's uh, an almost perfect flapping. <laughs> And now you realize just how chunky and fat this is gonna be. Now that we got that, we just need to build up a body around it with the head right here and some big old wings. As you can see, I added a head with a little face. And you know, it looks pretty scary. The difficult part is building around all the electronics. So I use these bendy pieces to make these little strips that go around here. So now we can put snot bricks on the bottom and actually start adding detail. All right, and here we have my greatest fear when I was eight. <laughs> Let's see if it's still scary. Okay guys, here it is. Ignore all that up there. Check us out. I'm scared already. Wow. <laughs> Look at it. The thing looks kind of possessed. I'm terrified. That's scary, guys. Like, come on. You guys turn it off. Well, that didn't go very far. Now it's just the head and the wings. That's even more scary. Let's move on to the next one. Hey, what's up, Brick Science? I challenge you to make a giant bearded dragon out of Lego. I think that'll look really cool. Yeah, it'll look really cool. It'll be a little difficult. We can do this, guys. I have an idea. So I'm thinking we'll make this thing pretty big and we'll build it out of bricks. And I have an idea for how we can make it look like it's breathing actual fire without using flame. I'm gonna use a program called Tinkercad, which lets you take a 3D model of anything and it turns it into Lego bricks and it shows you how to build the layers. I think for this model, we'll start with tan on the belly and then we'll make the top orange. And now we basically just start building it up until we get the right shape. You know, I changed my mind. For this model, Tinkercad, I thought it would work for this one, but it's just like really frustrating. They're putting like two by sixes everywhere and half the pieces aren't connected. So, you know, only do this in certain situations. I'm just gonna build up a bearded dragon how I know to, and I don't really know to, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so now I have four legs. So we have these two front legs and these two back legs, and these aren't even all the way built up because we have to integrate them into this. First, we have to remove this from the base plate. Okay, yeah, so that's a... Uh... This is a nah, I'm gonna do my own thing moment. 
Okay, now we have the legs on. So I'm gonna add a couple supports underneath and then we can build up and add the tail, which is like this big, and then the head. We're doing good. Okay, so my plan for the fire is to use this fog machine, which funny enough is actually made for lizards. I'm gonna take this long tube and feed it up through the neck of the lizard. And then I'm gonna take this light, which actually turns red, and shine it through the inside of the mouth to make it look like it's actually breathing fire. It makes a really cool effect. Boom, there we go, now we got eyes. And we have the open mouth. Kinda looks like a dinosaur right now, but I have to finish the head and go all the way down with the tail and stuff. Let's keep going. Okay, I finally finished the bearded dragon. This took hours. Now we can see if it actually breathes fire. If you simply come around here, insert a pin, you gotta do this push, and it turns on. Now we just insert this thing, turn the lights off. Yo, dude, it looks sick with the lights off. Let's go. That looks seriously so cool. <laughs> wow. Check it out, that is so sick. We got a bearded dragon that actually breathes fire. And I would say this thing is giant because it's bigger than a regular one and it took like five hours to build, okay? It's giant. <laughs> Zach, let me know what you think of this because it's pretty big. <laughs> We're almost eight hours into the 24 hours and I'm already super tired. What's going on, it's Matthew Beam here. I just got in a boxing fight with Mike Tyson so I challenge you to build a Lego boxing glove. All right, so I wanna build a boxing glove that opens up with the diorama on the inside of Mike Tyson and Matthew Beam actually fighting because that was pretty cool. So I just quick built up some minifigures. We got Mike Tyson and I used a frog piece to simulate motion. Not because I didn't have two boxing glove pieces. No, 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 it's motion. So we'll build a ring for the minifigures and then build the glove around it. And now that we have the centerpiece built up, we'll just grab our red bricks. We can start building up the glove. To make the glove open and close, we'll use a couple of these little hinge bricks. And we're gonna take the first hinge and put it right here. And then we'll take the second hinge and put it towards the top somewhere. Check it out, I even added some white pieces in here to make it look like there's a logo and then it still opens up to reveal the model. This is gonna be sick. And I'm using different colors on the inside that you're not gonna see so I can add more stability and re-certify it. It's looking pretty good. I think this is gonna be really cool. He's gonna like this. As you can see, there's a clip right there and there's a bar piece right here. And that means when we close this, it clicks shut and holds until you pull it apart. We'll just kind of lock those into the wall there. And it is life-size, as you can see. So, nine hours. <laughs> you guys may have noticed I'm wearing the sick hat that says The Geek Effect. It's from my friend Kirk over at The Geek Effect YouTube channel. He does like action figure reviews and stuff. Super cool. It's a really awesome hat. It's got green on the bottom. And so if you're a geek, check him out. Link in the description. And you can also check out the hat. Link in the description too. It's a nice hat. I also have these tiny little off-brand brick lights, and I was thinking I'd just throw these in here as like spotlights, so it'll look really cool when you open it. But it's super close to being done. All right, and here we have it, you guys. As you can see, it is life scale. All you gotta do is unclip it, and it opens up to reveal Matthew Beam fighting Mike Tyson in a sick boxing ring. I think it's turned out really good. We even have the little Beam Team logo down there. We have the inverted bit here, which kind of slots around it to close it, and just like that, it's a boxing glove again. I think this one turned out pretty sick. Matthew, if you if you like it, let, let me know. <laughs> or I'll have to do the next one. Hey, Riley, it's Half Sleep Chris here, and I was a massive fan of the videos where you built and flooded Lego City, but I was heartbroken to see it destroyed. So I want you to build a tiny scale version of the city, which this time you don't have to destroy. Or maybe you do. I'll leave that part up to you. Cool. All right, so it looks like we're building a micro scale city from the city that I flooded. It's genius. Great idea, Chris. These will represent the base plates, so two by two. I just finished our micro city. We have the shopping mall, the four skyscrapers, including the Daily Bugle, Mr. Beast Burger, Lego store, police station, Brick's toy factory, the car dealership, and the pool. We got all our living houses around here, the bank, the modular buildings, the fancy restaurant, the park with the fountain, the zoo, the apartment building, the cart mart, the aquarium, the Apple store, YouTube headquarters, the school, and the jazz club. And we have some cars dotted around the city. And now we can take this, and I feel like it's only fitting that we flood this one too. Here we go in three, two, one. Well, that was anticlimactic. See ya.